All right. Ready? All right. So uh, we are talking about uh, an object orientation. We talked about object orientation the last time we were here, right? We talked about, we said there are, there are three main aspects of object orientation that we need to uh, think about all the time when we are writing a C++ program to write an object-oriented program. Do you remember what was one of them? Inheritance. The next one? The next one? Polymorphism. Polymorphism. Pass it to the next person. Okay, so so we have inheritance, we have polymorphism, and the next one is? You just pass it. Three pillars. Inheritance. Three pillars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, pass. I just gave up the answer. Encapsulation. So, so inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. Remember what the encapsulation was? Uh, we have to make a, a, a class or function or variable private. You are talking about code. When I ask concept questions, you answer concept answer. Okay? When I ask you what is encapsulation, you tell me we create a class, we make a variable in there, and we add a function to it. That's perfect, actually. But well, that's not what it is. When you are in an interview, somebody is asking you, what is encapsulation? You're going to say, pass it to the next lady. Do you remember what this encapsulation was? <laughs> you're going you're gonna to start using this. Remember encapsulation? Capsule. What do you yeah, do? Right. That's, that's, that's called abstraction. So, and, <laughs> and you don't answer like this, <laughs> okay? Bring it over here and talk like that, okay? So, encapsulation, do you remember what encapsulation was? Yes. That's a shame. You should be ashamed of yourself. Go. Can I read from my notes? <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. It refers to the integration of data and logic, like a person who drives a car doesn't need to know how. I didn't say that. You wrote it from somewhere else. But it's OK. I can do that. Integration, data, and logic. Good. So packing the data and behavior together. We put the data and behavior. The data and the behavior rel relative to that data. OK? It's like you have a, a, a transcript. Transcript has lots of marks. And it has an action called average. When you do an average, what, or GPA, what GPA does goes through all the marks and calculates what the GPA is. So GPA becomes the behavior, and all the marks in the transcript becomes the data. Packing the data and behavior together, data and functions together, we call it encapsulation. Did you study? Can I ask? <laughs> OK, what is polymorphism, remember? Just you can pass it if you don't. If you don't remember, you torture the next one. <laughs> Like doing an action in multiple ways. Doing an action in? Multiple ways. In multiple ways. Doing an action in multiple ways. I like when I hear an answer like that. It's the exact same thing I said, but in a different way. I like that. So I don't know if you, if you read that over there, but, but yeah, doing the same thing in different ways, it was polymorphism, right? Same thing, different ways, and polymorphism. And what was inheritance? Remember that? Pass it to the next person. Pass it to the next person. Inheritance. Inheritance is you can build upon it. Build upon it. Give it to the next person. What does it mean to build upon it? That there is a class that already exists, so we uh, take the properties from that class. And make Again, it like your friend, you are giving me C, C syntax. Okay, C, 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 C plus plus syntax, syntax. What is English way of saying inheritance? Uh, the ability of class members to inherit the data. Again, C plus plus. Good. Next person. It's not a bit uh, like you are all right, by the way. You are all perfectly correct. What is inheritance? I just gave you one, two words actually. Reuses the design. Thank you. Thank you. Reusing the design. Okay. <laughs> reusing the design. You are reusing your design, and that's what we call. Inheritance. How do we reuse the design? We already have a, a, an object built, something built with all the properties and a behavior and all the good stuff together. And we want to make something better than that that does the same thing. We don't reinvent the wheel. We use the old design. 
and uh, build a new thing out of it. Do you remember what was my example on that? You don't have the talking stick, do you? No. <laughs> do you remember what it was? You can pass it if you don't remember. <laughs> I, I remember you talked about cars, like how. No, cars was when I talk, it was when I was talking about encapsulation. Cars was when I was saying like a car drives, a car has speed, and everything's together. When you have a car, you know exactly what it is. That was encapsulation. Oh. Uh, uh, it was a motorcycle and a bike. Bicycle. No, bicycle. motorcycle and a bike are the same thing. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, they're the same thing. Yeah, so it's a bicycle and a motorcycle. We said bicycle is a motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. Therefore, you reuse design. I told you if you are in a place that you've never seen a motorcycle before, but you've seen what a bicycle is, I can explain to you what a motorcycle is easily. I can tell you a motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was inheritance. You can park that because that was the question that I wanted. Uh, yeah, you, you, you got, <laughs> yeah, so that's that. So. I hope you are getting used to all this. So this is how we're going to do it in this class. Okay. So, um, um, and uh, yeah. So that's that. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, okay. Uh, I, literally, I'm going through here to see exactly what I'm teaching. I'm just looking at this. So uh, uh, we talked about all those things. Okay. Uh, programming languages. C plus plus is like you see uh, it. It it, it uh, it's a it, it's a van diagram and it puts the C plus plus. Inside uh, C, inside C++, that's almost that's that's correct. Which means C++ is a superset of C. Everything you have done in C, you can do in C++. There are a few things that you can't do in C++ that is way above your pay grade. So, for you, C++ is C language with object orientation. So anything you did before, you can do it um, as that one. So. Uh, <sighs> Read all these, please. <clears throat> Type safety. Okay, so uh, C is very forgiving when it comes uh, passing one type as another. It's very forgiving. You have a function with an integer, you pass a double to it. It casts it and kind of covers it for you, okay? In many different cases. Even if you are dealing with addresses and pointers and things like that, like if you have uh, some, uh, 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 an integer, an Einstein integer, you can actually put an address in it, but that's not a pointer. It doesn't complain. In C++, type safety is a little bit higher, especially in the level that we are, which means many things that you have done before and you get away with it, got away with it, now it's going to give you an error, say you can't do that. You have to cast it. You have to tell me what you are doing so I'm sure you are not making a mistake. So type safety essentially is the, it's not that it's not allowing you to do so. We are not reducing the power of C. You still have the power. But when you are doing those crazy stuff, you have to tell the compiler that you are doing the crazy stuff. Otherwise, the compiler is going to say, wait a minute, you, tell me what you're doing. I'm not going to allow you to do this unless you know what you're doing. It's like, you, if there's a gun, uh, I can give you the gun, loaded gun, and I don't tell you to, you're going to shoot yourself. But if you're trained and you know exactly what to do, you can, I hope you never have to use ever a gun in your life ever for no reason, but that's a good thing. So it, it's just uh, 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 a, a dangerous device with, with safety added to it. It's like a chainsaw that didn't have a lock before. These days, when you are using a chainsaw, you have to push this button, push that button, do this, and turn it on. Otherwise, it won't go on. All these safeties are added, so they want you to use it safely, which means uh, use it in a way that uh, <coughs> Uh, it won't hurt you, but, but, but hurting you, it means uh, a language will do unexpected things. You think you are doing something, but the program will do something else. That's the worst type of bug. Where you write the code, the compiler doesn't give you any warning and runs it for you, and you don't get any error message. But when you look at the outcome, it is not what you expected. And you go through logic and you see everything is beautiful and good. That's because of type, safe, type, type safety. Okay? 
We'll go, all these things, OOP345, we're going to go through the bone of it. For now, you, we're just letting you know they exist. <clears throat> Do you remember what namespaces were? You don't have the talking stick. Okay. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's he parked it, not you. Do you remember what namespaces were? Just say no, and I'm going to go to the next one. Okay. okay, good. Give it. Okay, so I'm going to explain what namespaces were. Okay, so namespaces. So uh, I'm going to tell you what the syntax is. I told you what the namespace was before, but I didn't tell you actually how to implement it. Now I'm going to tell you how it's implemented, okay? So namespaces we set when, the, when you have multiple implementations happening at the same time to create a solution with multiple projects all happening at the same time. When you are doing this, many different departments have different types of abstraction on the same entity. Could you please tell me what is abstraction? What does it mean, abstraction? <laughs> Anything that comes to mind. What is abstract art? Abstraction is the way that you can uh, name a certain I, you're almost there um, do you know anybody knows what is abstract art yeah <laughs> you know what is abstract art it's a picture that everybody can have different ideas from the same it's not yeah you're absolutely right everybody have different ideas it's not actually that abstract art people do that but the artist had a specific view of something there's a triangle with two dots on it and a crescent at the side, and you say, what the heck is that? That's a lady dancing, okay? So it's the, that's the view of that artist of what a lady looks like while dancing. Does something crazy over there I don't understand. In computer science, abstraction means looking at the same object in many different ways. This is not yours, is it? Okay, uh, I'm not gonna touch that. Um, <laughs> um, What is this? Pin drive. Pass it. What is a pin drive? Um, an external drive that can store uh, files. That can store information. So this is a USB drive that I have in my hand, right? Correct? OK. Now I can have many different abstractions on this. I can look at it as a container that holds things. Correct? I can look at it as a consumer of electricity. It has nothing to do with what it contains. I just want to know how much electricity it uses. Correct? So if I am in the electricity supply business and I want to see, for example, what a computer is, I do not care what it does. All the computer is for me is the fact that it's using I don't know, 250 watts of electricity. But if I give that one to a person who does program, that computer is a programming device with which they can write programs. I give that to an artist, it's a canvas they can write on. So the same object from views of different people based on the business logic have an absolutely different meaning. That is called abstraction. Okay, so when we are talking about abstraction, when I'm saying we have five different departments thinking about a student, each one of them have a different abstraction of what a student is, that's what I mean. For what? Uh, for one, a student could be a member of a, a student club. That's how they design a student. They create a student, uh, what are the skills, what are the things it can bring to group club and stuff like that. That's a student from student fe federation thingy. A student from registration is a person with a student number and uh, what type of courses they pass. A student uh, from cafeteria's point of view, as we said, is that uh, it, what kind of a food they have allergy to. You know what I mean? So it's completely different types of abstraction. And when you have a, a system that is working, each department creates their own class with the name student. And if they all compile it together, that's where it's going to hit the fan because they all 
choose the same name. So what do they do? When they actually create, so the first department, let's say the human resources department wants to create a student. So the HR wants to create a student. The, the analyst, the person who's doing uh, in control of all departments says, the HR, your namespace is HR. So when they program, they write namespace, HR, open curly bracket, close. Any code they write is within the scope. A namespace is not a structure. A namespace is not a class. If you have two classes with the same name, what happens? Conflict. Compiler is going to tell you you have two classes with the same name. You can't. If you have two namespaces with the same name, they merge and become a bigger namespace. So that's why all the people in HR team, they write their namespaces in HR namespace. When their code is compiled, all the code merge into HR. OK? So anything that I create over here, if I want to create over here a teacher in the HR department over here, my teacher will have such an abstraction. It has years of uh, experience and the amount of salary that is that is getting. So that's the HR point of view of a teacher. And then I create another one from the uh, educational point of view. A teacher is the one that teaches the subjects of this semester. So the abstraction of the two are completely two different things. Now, if I want to create an instance of the teacher that belongs to HR, I'm going to go HR scope resolution teacher uh, H, uh, HT, I'm going to call it. So that's the HR teacher. The variable name is HT. OK? Now, if I want to create an instance of the educational teacher, a teacher that does education, EDU teacher is ET, the extraterrestrial. ET is the one that we have. So now there are no conflicts with these. The thing is that maybe this program that is written is written by the team that is working in the education. But they need the HR to know how much to pay based on the subject that the person is getting. If that's the case, this team is keep, it's going to keep using the EDU over and over and over and over and over. That's frustrating. Because of that, if this main is being written, if, so let, this using namespace is going to go up, X. So if this team is, if this program is written by the EDU department, then they can write using namespace edu and then they don't need to write edu over here anymore <clears throat> got it it means any object that you create that it doesn't know where it is first it's going to check to see if teacher is in std it's not then it's going to check to see if it's in edu it's there it uses it if it's not there either then it's going to give you an error so these our namespaces, and it can be in separate files. When you compile, they just merge. OK? Obviously, no, you would never see a code like this in your life, that you have two namespaces in one file, ever. OK? Namespaces are in different files. You don't have two namespaces created in the same file. That's just crazy. OK? So yo, yo, yo. <coughs> you, as a student of the School of Data Science and yada, 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 We'll write all your code just for practice so we know how we are doing it. All your code will be written in namespace SDDS. So anytime you are writing any code, you write in namespace SDDS. Do not include stuff in a namespace. Let the namespace to be separate. Because they merge, because they merge, if you put a header file inside the namespace, and that header file has a namespace inside, then you're going to have a namespace inside another namespace. I don't want to go there. It's got to go bananas. So always have your namespaces outside of inclusions. Do your includes out of a namespace, and write the code that is written by you for the SDDS department inside the namespace only. 
And that's going to be probably your first workshop, just to organize a code. We're going to give you a working code, and we're going to say organize it into modules. You're going to take that code, put the things, and then just organize it and put it in SDS and, and compile it as a, as a multiple, file, multiple file project. So that's that. That's namespaces. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? No? All right. Using namespace we talked about. Where is my cheat sheet over here? Oh. In the first namespace, let's say in that HR, I have a struct admin. OK, with whatever. I don't care, OK? And in EDU over here, <coughs> I have a struct student. OK? If I have something like this, OK, and I am using two namespaces, and I do over here using namespace HR2, then <clears throat> admin does not need qualification. You can say admin A because it finds it in a namespace. I can say student S because it finds it in any way. But because teacher is appearing in both, I have to qualify it. So the names that's, that repeat in namespaces, because you use them both, you have to only qualify those. The rest can remain just by themselves. That makes sense, right? OK, it means if there is a conflict, you got to fix it. If you just write teacher over there, compiler's got to tell me which one. I have two teachers. Let me know, OK? And then you're going to fix it. Are we good? All right. So I'm going to save this as, see these, these notes that I write like this, they really don't make sense for somebody who just looks at it for the first time. You have to listen to what I'm saying and, and see it. So. so in here, I'm going to say a namespaces dot cpp, and I save it, and I go to the next one. So you're going to see multiple files like that uh, with kind of a title of what they are dealing with and uh, uh, you know, what are we doing over there? Why well, I keep doing that? Let me just come over here. What's the time? 09, good. Next thing, method of input and output, OK? <clears throat> we talked about at the beginning of the thing last time I created that thing. What, I, what did I create? create? Uh, I created something with display and something. Anybody remembers what it was? I should look at it. Anybody remembers what I wrote in the last class? No? No one reviewed? What is this? I don't want. Anyone? No? No hope? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So we created a student, and, and I added methods to the student. Remember that? OK. <clears throat> so that student became an object that had some properties, right? Had some actions. We could say student.display. Remember that? OK. <clears throat> They have done that. They have done that uh, for everything in C++. So everything you have in C++ and anything you have in C++, they are entities that they have properties and they have methods. What is a method? Talking stick. You have the talking stick. Do you remember what the method was? Do you remember? When I say method, what do I mean? The function that belong to a struct? Thank you. The function that. So we said from now on, we don't say struct anymore. Let's call it a class. OK. So class, structure, potatoes, potatoes. OK? They're the same. The only difference is that, remember, I, I created a private and public in there. So you couldn't access pieces of the thing. And I said it creates, uh, 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 it, it creates privacy. 
Okay? When you, if you write class, it's exactly like structure. The difference is that a class by default is private. Nothing is, can be touched in a class unless you make it public. In structure, it's exactly the reverse. When you write struct, it is a class, but everything is public by default. You have to make it private. We'll come to it soon. I'm just letting you know. So, so my point is, my point is, they created, they, we have two classes. These two classes are called OStream for output stream. When I said stream, I said stream of information. That's why they call it stream. You pick up information as you, and you pick stuff from stream as it passes by. That's what, what that's why they call it. It's stream of information. So output stream to stream output on a device and input stream to get information from a device. These are two classes. These two classes are instantiated inside IO stream and made public to everyone. These two instances, the instance of O stream is called C out. The instance of I stream is called C in. So C out is a class representing your console output. C in is a class representing your console input. Okay? And these are polymorphic objects. So they, have, they do many things that you, uh, it, you may have seen the operators being used by something else, but it has a different meaning here. For example, the left shift operator, which you don't know what it is, the bitwise operator, with C out means insertion operator. When you want to insert something in console, you use that. So in here, <clears throat> I can do something like this. I can write something like this. So let's say over here, character name. Well, let's put over here 50 characters for it. And then I'm going to have an integer uh, age. Okay, so I have these two things. I wanna, I'm working in a bar. I want to see if somebody can come in. They're legal to actually drink in here or not. So I have to actually say, uh, so the first thing that I'm going to say over here, uh, how old are you? So I'm going to say C out. So I'm inserting. I, I want the console output to show stuff. So the console output, and I insert to it. I'm going to say, <clears throat> hello, uh, welcome, welcome to Cinnabar. <laughs> OK, uh, what is your name? Your name. OK, and, and let's actually do it like this. What is your name? And I'm going to go to new line. I'm going to insert a, an end line over there. And after that, and I'm, I'm going to insert a prompt. So it's going to print that in one line. It's going to go to new line, print the dash, and uh, the, the greater than sound like a prompt ready to work. Now I'm going to say console input. What is console input, people? That's your keyboard. That's CN is this. CN is this. So I'm going to say extraction operator. Extract from CN and put it in name. Done. OK? Now I can actually say, what, I can, what can I say? I can say C out. Hello. And I'm going to insert into it the name. And I'm going to put comma over here. Commute 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, I have to run. <laughs> OK, this is all. OK. So in here, I'm going to say hello name. OK. And in here, I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to say, uh, how old are you? Da -da -da -dum -dum. Turn off your cell phone. OK. And I'm showing another prompt. OK? Now I'm going to read the age. How do I, do I need to do percent %d? Do I need to know percent %s? No. It's a polymorph object. I extract from c in a name the exact same way I extract an integer. So I'm going to say extract an integer out of c in and put it in age. Because this is a character c string, it knows it's supposed to read. It's a polymorph thing. In here, because it's an integer, C in knows it's supposed to receive an integer. And it's a very shy object. If you don't give it an integer, it's not going to talk to you anymore until you apologize. 
Actually, that's how it works. So you can actually say, hey, see, are you okay? It says, yeah, I'm okay. You go, if it's not okay, so so. I apologize. That's apologize in C++ is called clear. So you go C in dot clear. It means I clear it. Now ignore all the garbage and continue. You can actually do all the, so you, you essentially talk to it like that. Okay? It's an object oriented thing. But we, 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 we deal like utopia over here. We think that uh, the user is not stupid, which is not. User is the dumbest person ever. You know that, right? Stud users are the dumbest people in the world. That's how you program. Even when you are user testing your own program, you have to always think of it that way and write your program that way. In this case, we are assuming that user is an intelligent person. And when we say name, they're not going to put over there some number. Or when we say age, they're not going to write 25 with TW, and they actually write 25. So we assume that, OK? So we assume that no mistakes. Well, I'm not going to do, it's not a foolproof thing, actually, OK? So now I'm going to say over here, if that's C. You go back to see if that age is greater than 19, greater or equal to 19, right? If you're 19, you can drink in Ontario, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Those people who are just 19, <laughs> they all know that. Okay. The rest, they forgot. Okay. So, 19. Oops. <clears throat> all right. Now I can write over here, uh, what would you like to drink? And, and the story continues. OK? OK, and in here I'm going to say, uh, get out and come back when you grow up. <laughs> OK? <clears throat> right? Now, how do we run a program and test it? This is how we do it. I hope that you know all this in, from, from IPC 144, but magic F5, not F5, F10. I press F10 and compile, run, stops at the very first thing. What did it say? Did I put F10? It is F10. What's going on? <clears throat> I think I'm out. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I was out of the thing. I brought it in. There you go. See, let me just... Um, Make it a little smaller so I can see what's going on. Whoops, a daisy. OK. So there you go. So it stops right over there, and this is your output. Actually, let me just stick it over here. And put this one over here. There we go. So now I F10 again. I see name has garbage in it. I see age has garbage in it. OK? Now C out. Hello, welcome to Cinnabar. What is your name? Goes over there. Now C in wants to extract the name. F10, it's going to extract the name. My name is Fred. And I hit enter. Now it's going to say, hello, Fred. How old are you? And as you see, that's exactly what happens. So everything gets ex inserted into, that, into, into C out. And now C in is going to happen. So F10, it's going to wait for it. And I'm going to say over here, uh, I don't know, 58. And I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to say age greater than one. Yes. What would you like to drink? All right? And if I put the other one, it will say else and yada yada. You don't want to test that, right? Everybody trust me that if statement works. All right? So that's that. That's C in and C out. This is so all you need to do throughout the semester to learn about all the methods of C in and C out. What is a method? Who has the microphone? You should have the microphone, my lady. Yeah. What is a method? A function that is what? That is doing something. <laughs> oh, my God. I say, what is a function? So the function is something that does. No. What is a method? Method is a function that is member of a class. OK. Main is not a method because nobody owns it. But C in and C out, they have many methods inside. When you put a dot, a list is going to appear of so many things. In here, I can do <clears throat> C in dot. Look at this. Keep going. These are all the things C in can do. So we learn these, and we can write a foolproof thing with that object. OK? Got it? All right. 
you can pass the mic to the lady in front of you. All right. Okay, so that's the in and see out, and we're going to learn that uh, in more detail as we are going through. Any questions? Question? Like the, we, we have to write on the line, and so we yes. use the or we use the camel. Oh, uh, you will see. First of all, <coughs> you will see in many of my code, I start with M underline. You see in many of my code, I start the name of the variable with M underline. So I go M underline name. That doesn't apply. Okay? The reason we do that is because of IntelliSense. Okay? When you create a class, all the member variables, you start with M underline, and then you name it. So if you are creating a student and a student has a name, then that variable name, you call it M underline name. And if it has an age, you write M underline age. So what happens when you create an instance of student like S and you put S dot, all you need to do is to type M and it shows all the member variables. So it's a, it's a trick that we programmers have started and that's what we do. Okay? Actually, I got that from Visual Basic because it's a long time ago. So it's, it's uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Anyway, so, <clears throat> so yeah, but uh, naming convention, uh, I usually, this is crazy, but I use underline for the uh, membership. The rest is camel. Okay? So if, for example, in here, in a previous example, for namespaces, if I wanted to have a name for the student, for a teacher over here, I will call it uh, I will call it character m name, and in here I would say uh, say oh sorry uh, say forty characters, and character m surname oh surname last name I would put a last name, I will put fifty one over here fifty characters. <clears throat> So the, I, I, this is how I do it. I don't know what other profs do, so you may see different things, but uh, try to follow the same as, as you're doing. So first one, that's membership, and the rest is common notation. You may see it changes. We are not that uh, uh, strict about it. Let's put it that way. All right. So let's stop this. We already talked about encapsulation. How much time? Oh, we don't have it. Class ends at 25, right? All right, so this is the end. Any questions? We'll, we'll come back and we'll continue the rest after. Any questions? Any questions? No questions? Have a beautiful day. Thank you very much. <laughs>